Hey everyone, welcome back to the Experimental Aircraft Channel. I'm here today in Mooresville, North Carolina, EAA Chapter 309, to talk about an RV-9. Okay, so today I'm here with John Garabedian, again at EAA Chapter 309, where they're building a RV-9, you see behind us. So John, can you tell me just a little bit about, this is your place, your, your My hosting. My place, yep, we're in Mooresville, North Carolina. Okay, uh, and uh, what was the decision to build this airplane for the, the chapter? Well, actually the chapter got donated wings and tails from a guy who was never going to finish them. Okay. So, as a nonprofit, I believe we ended up giving him a tax credit or something along those lines for that donation which turns out to be that wing that wing and that elevator over there so we've completed that wing on the wall we've so you have you have a complete kit here well uh nearly we took on the, to finish the wings and tails and when we pretty much completed all of it the chapter decided that they would fund the fuselage if we wanted to continue to work on it so okay. i sponsor the space here every tuesday night uh, for about three hours, we all get together and build, and uh, this is all us at this point. This is probably a year's work, a just, year, just, year of in? just of okay. Tuesday nights, three hours. I don't work yeah. on this uh, on my spare time. This is just for the BAA group. And how many people are a member of your chapter right now? Well, I believe we have about 75 members. And active the work on the planes? No, or? here I probably get six to ten people a week, but we have three builds going on at this air park alone. So there's, wow. there'll be anywhere from 20 to... 40 guys at any given week. Okay. We are. Now, when this four pills, when the, when this plane is completed, is it just uh, to, to to sell and start another project, or are you going to fly to start a this is actually a flying this, this is actually the second. No, we're not going to complete this. Um, we found some issues with the first one they did, which was before my time about completing an aircraft. So the focus on this one is to do a complete airframe. No avionics, no engine, and sell it as a complete airframe. Okay. Let somebody else finish it off. Right. And then they'll end up getting their 51% repairman. Okay. Share. So you're more focused on the build and getting people involved in learning about how to build an airplane with this. Right. Or at and least this, this project. This is the sheet metal project, which is the 309's project, but we also have a wooden project uh, there, and there's an, also a composite project a little further down the way. So there's whatever you want to work on, we have it here. Okay. Good. Excellent. Yeah. It seems good, like it's get, a good crowd. Yeah, it seems like you have a lot of involvement in this chapter. Yeah, we'll get four or five really involved guys here, and then there's a lot of conversation, and, and you know, there are guys anywhere from, you know, just getting to that point in life where they want to fly or are trying to do something, and then we have 40-year-old uh, seasoned airline captains and, and everything in between. Okay. And do you have a few maybe young eagles involved in your chapter as well that on um, the build stage? or in, in We've actually had a couple, uh, uh, not so many young eagles. We do fly three young eagles a year I think as far as our events but we've had a couple of young members in our chapter and we actually helped them along one of them actually became a CFI and is now is in Arizona I believe flying everything under the sun so nice. uh, his experience here he still remembers and took with him so I, I think it was all positive very good so you've got the RV9 project which yep. is the chapter project correct and then you personally have a couple of things going on here as well correct yes I have uh, built uh, rotary helicopters I've built four of them own two of them and I now have a Bell 47 helicopter so nice uh, I also built a cub but that's that's gone okay you want to talk about that for just a second okay so other than the uh, the chapter build which is the RV9 you've got some personal projects in your your own hangar here of course I do uh, this is, what is this here? This is a 2012 uh, Rotaway Talon A600. This is actually the current model that they sell. Uh, I found this one as a rollover about two years ago. Rebuilt it and then flown it for about a year. I've got about 75 hours. I've got a little over 500 hours just in Rotaway helicopters. Wow. I'm a big fan of them. Love them. They do what they're supposed to do. Great for the experimental world. Uh, I was taught in a Rotaway helicopter and went right through Private pilot rotorcraft was the first rating I ever got in a rotorway helicopter. So they have their own training program? Uh, the there are enough experienced guys out there that will come to you as private trainers. Okay. This particular one, as in anything, I believe if you're going to fly it, especially experimental, you should know every nut and bolt. So this was a ground up restoration. I took okay. this down to nothing, powder coated the frame, 
did every reassembly procedure myself, making sure that all the angles and distances were exactly where they were supposed to be. Rotoway is pretty good at giving you a lot of information and pictures on the detail stuff, and then they leave the fiberglass stuff kind of a little bit on your own. Uh, uh, let me see where we're going. Uh, you know, replace the windscreen, and uh, yes, I did choose the purple paint. Uh, yeah. They, they they look pretty cool here, but when you're flying around there, they're not very easily seen in the sky. They're, they're pretty small. But uh, so the they, darker the darker the better to be visible in the sky. Well, I just wanted something bright and colorful so that I would get noticed. Sure. And, and that happens with these. Um, they do what they're supposed to. They're uh, a fair weather flying machine they're not really meant for you know rain and ifr stuff but they're they've come a long way i think that company has just passed their 50th anniversary in sales so wow. it's one of the companies that's been around for a while they've got pretty much everything figured out uh this is 150 horsepower water cooled vertical engine yeah john tell me about i, I had no idea I, I did not realize that Rotaway made their own engine. What, what a lot is of people it exactly? ask, and Rotaway is one of the few that makes their own engine. Uh, they originally started in the 70s with Evinrude engines, found out they weren't enough, and they started developing their own engine. And they've come a long way over the years, and they got all the small stuff figured out. Um, I mean, this is two guys in a full load of fuel. You'll be using most of your power to do a hover, uh, especially on a warm day. Uh, what what is it? Is it, is it a four stroke? A uh, four-cylinder horizontally posed, just typical aircraft engine, water-cooled, air-cooled. It's water-cooled. Water-cooled. Uh, a lot okay. of people think it's a Volkswagen engine, and the, the cylinder heads kind of look like a Volkswagen, but this is their own design. It's vertical, it stands up. Uh, it actually basically runs a set of four main drive belts to run this secondary unit. Okay. And this drives everything. There's a shaft in there that uh, is an overrunning clutch that will unlock in case of an auto uh, rotation and everything as long as your blades are turning you're going to have all your controls so and you bought this as a, as a product just to fix and flip type thing or yeah the intent uh was to keep this for a long time um and i bought a custom trailer for it and i've been to florida with it i've been to oshkosh with this um i've been around the roadway community for about a decade and uh, i know all the guys and all the big names and i think the company's here to stay and the product does what it's supposed to do you know, if you're a tinkerer and you like fixing and adjusting and stuff, then they're a good machine. You'll, you'll, there's a road ahead service about every 100 hours, so you'll be in there doing some maintenance about every 100 hours, which for me, a lot of flying was every couple of years. But if you're pretty accurate, you can get, done, get it done in a full day. Excellent. Um, other than that, it's oil changes 25 hours. Everything's electronic ignition, uh, electronic fuel injection, and uh, electric water pump, and a lot of these products are over-the-shelf uh, automotive products. Now, this starts out as a kit, or can you get like a builder assist? Do they offer similar programs with there the helicopter? There is a guy down in uh, Foley, Alabama that will do a builder assist with you, and there are uh, at least two or three other guys that I know of that will travel and come help you. Okay. Uh, also, the trainers will travel and come and what's to you. the, I know prices change all the time, but what, oh. approximately what kind of cost for a kit? These, these have gone crazy. These are now 140000 which will scare you. Uh, two years ago they were 110 and two years before that they were like 95,000 so they've gone crazy lately is that There's, I would assume complete including engine or is that just an airframe kit oh no that's everything that's okay. everything everything okay. except electronics and paint right. you won't get a transponder or radio but you will get a instrument panel with all your functions excellent well very good and what's this hide in the back over here that is my newest latest pride and joy that is a Bell 47 G4A that is 305 horse uh, owned by a guy, guy named uh, Jeff Pino out of Arizona, who uh, unfortunately died, and this was one of his toys. I was lucky enough to put my hands on it. Okay. Um, that just came out of a four-year rebuild, and uh, I bought it about 100 hours out of that rebuild, and now it has about 200 hours. Again, this will, you will be seen at Oshkosh. We flew rides this summer at Oshkosh. Okay. This was one of the four helicopters going over your head every five minutes. So it gets on the air a lot. Uh, yeah, and I am spoiled rotten now with three people and three and a half hours of fuel and plenty of power. Great to learn in these things because you learn to manage power and use different things associated with helicopters to get you where you want to go as far as uh, flying. Um, the power is nice to have, but, you know, if you don't have to rely on it, you still have other tools in your skill set because sure. of learning in this, at least sure. in my opinion. And what is that one powered by? That's a Lycoming. What's That's a Lycoming 540, naturally aspirated. Uh, 
Now what you might find interesting is it's sitting on a platform. That is interesting. Because, because this is a 2,000 pound machine, I can't drag it in and out myself. Right, So right. I cannibalized a couple golf carts that fabricated this last year. And this unit here will motor it out in the yard and drop it on the ground and then motor it out of the way. Nice. And take off. So this is something I fabricated for this machine. And as you can see, it just barely fits in the hangar. That, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that blade ends it up going just, over there. It just fits in the hangar, doesn't it? Yeah, this is a nice one. This is Bose headsets and it's got custom fabricated instrument panel. This is, a, this is a real nice one. Uh, what, and what uh, horsepower rating is this, IO540? This is 305. 305, wow. Yep, hydraulic servos, uh, got the heavy 900 transmission. This one has uh, all the extras, the mufflers are an extra. All these, all these tubes have been polished. Uh, and if you look, even, they even took the detail to put some stainless steel wrap here. And yeah, this, this is a bit more of a, of a show helicopter. This, this, this is, is the MASH helicopter. It was in Army MASH Green, one. right? This is 1970. This was the fourth generation of them. They made five. Um, so you, the modern version, if you will, I think they were made till about 1974 or 75. Okay. Very cool. Well, thanks John for taking a minute out of your build night to oh. talk about what's going on here at your chapter and uh, the different personal projects you have going on. So oh. I really appreciate, Happy appreciate to your have time. You. Happy to have you. Uh, anybody's welcome anytime. We have uh, open door policy. Anybody that has an interest, we're more than welcome to have them. Excellent. Thanks again. Okay guys, time to close up the shop. Remember to hit that like button, subscribe for more videos like this, and remember, just build it. I'll see you on the next one.